can't go sign like the top 25 free agents. So they're all coming here and you're, you're going to run through all your cap room. You're not going to have any cap room left. And then if some of these guys can't play because they're free agency, don't be on this carousel again. You don't know. Like there's a reason why a lot of these guys are available unless they're good, unless the team's good and then they can't afford anybody. Okay. So our first guy up, let's talk about him. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Let's go. So I'm telling you up front, Nashville bound. So stick around for the show. I'll give you what I got on Nelson coming to the Titans. Some of you may not even want Nelson to come to the Titans. And that's totally fine because it got you covered. So you got a little poll on the side there. If you want, go ahead and click which of the four. I couldn't add more than four. So I got four guys. These will be the four guys I'm going to talk about tonight. Which one of these four do you want coming to the Titans? Please do not tell me one thing. Please do not tell me one thing. And the one thing you cannot tell me right now is do not tell me you will worry about it in the draft. First up, Kendall Fuller. Let's go. All right. So Kendall Fuller's up first. Again, don't forget, if that little red bar is up there, hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate you. And again, the three dots to the upper right, Right above the Titan uh, uh, upload network sign. If you click those, I know it's short, it's a little bit different, but if you click those, then the, the more options open up and then you can hit that like button. We'd appreciate we're at seven likes right now. We got uh, 33 of you watching. So, so we went into how bad it was. So if you're watching the show, you're like, okay, what's up? Upload, you got some, some nuggets. Let's go. We're going to break down each of these four free agents. I want you to make the call. Which one would you go with Rand? Now there's, two that I'm interested in, but one is ridiculously probably not going to happen because of the exact position that they play. Okay. So let's get into Kendall Fuller and then I'll get into some of your comments. So let's start off with Kendall Fuller. So Kendall Fuller, Fuller, the, the positives behind Kendall Fuller. Well, number one, he can play multiple spots on that defensive side of the ball. I mean, he's had time at safety. He's had time at slot corner. He can play outside corner. Like Fuller can do pretty much anything you want him to do. And again, under this whole Vrabel thing that we came from, that was kind of like the end all be all be versatile, be able to on a pinch, be able to go in and play it at a bunch of random spots. All right. The other thing that I love about Kendall Fuller, this is Jared Stillman's guy. So Jared is already on there saying, Hey, I would pay everything for this guy out of the course. This is the guy he wants. And I, and I listened to him on the radio. I kind of, was like, hey, Jared's speaking a lot of truth here. I, I understand a lot of what he's trying to say. Again, the key thing Jared made is the availability factor. Okay, well, 1,800 is an average over the last three years of snaps that this guy's came out and played for Washington. That is a lot of snaps. That That is ridiculous amounts of availability for a cornerback. You know, corners aren't always in, in harm's way but sometimes they kind of find themselves in harm's way, whether it's across the middle, whether it's an interception return, and then there comes some kind of guy that comes out of nowhere and hits them, or it's just a running back plowing through like corners. They don't usually wear the knee and the, the thigh pads. They're they're They just, some of them make business decisions, but anyone that tries to tackle and be a part, I mean, that that's risk for injury, especially with these big offensive linemen coming after him. His coverage grade last year was 82.8. That is solid. Now, again, yards per whatever, I think what, like, again, I'll get my notes because I actually took, take notes, right? Maybe that's just me being a teacher, but I actually take notes. So when you're looking at some different things for him, yards per uh, reception is 10. I, I think that's an important to know. I think that's pretty decent. I don't think that's like terrible. War scores are off the charts. I mean, his war score came in last year at number seven point seven five. Uh, the season before, 0.48, which ranked him 17th, and then 0.83 ranked him number three, which was basically in the 2021 season. So the consistency factor for Fuller is definitely going to be there. Now, the problem with Fuller, according to Pro Football Focus, it's going to cost you about three years. You're probably going to have to pay a little bit more than $13 million a season, and you're going to have to give them a little bit more than $25 million guaranteed, and that's roughly going to net you about $40 million. I would say in those kind of scenarios, depending on the injury contract and how that all per pertains out with, with that thing, I would say you're looking at probably trying to at least get this guy in for the next two years. 
Yes, you may be giving him three, maybe you give him four, but you're looking for two solid more years out of him. He's 29 years old, okay? He's 29 years old. So he had two interceptions last year. I know it's not a big deal, but a lot of your guys didn't have any interceptions. A lot of your guys or my guys and all of our guys didn't do absolutely nothing. They kind of just laid down there and let people run all over them and get open whenever they felt like it. Third and 15, no worries. Christian Fulton's playing 15 yards back. First down, move the chains, right? A lot of that was over and over and over last year. So this guy is pretty solid. I mean, pass rush grade 56. Okay, whatever. Run defense, 78. That's solid. His best three games last year against the Bills, a 91.9 against Josh Allen. Against the Falcons, which were good in the beginning of the year. I'm not sure when they played them, 84.7 and Jets 81. And the Jets had a good defense, but not so much on offense that much, right? Three worst games, Bears 35.3. What happened? DJ Moore went off. That's what happened. DJ Moore, depending on the game situation for the Chicago Bears, had like 200 and some receiving yards. It was just flat out ridiculous. Now, I don't know if they came on the screen. I don't know if they came on the deep ball. I don't know if they came on a missed tackle, but that's a lot of yards, and I'm assuming that impacted Kendall Fuller's performance, right? Patriots 54.4 or 5, and Giants 56.3. Those were all coverage grades in 2023. The best three, worst three. I don't know, 5'11", 198. I think this is worth a look. I don't know if you're willing to pay him. I'm going to get to your comments now. This is uh, Kendall Fuller from Washington. Now, Washington's a hit or miss. It's a mess. You guys know this. Washington is a mess. XD Gamer in the house. What's going on, buddy? I'm not even sure. I got to try to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. What's up, XD Gamer? Let me maybe put this way up here for you. So we can see that. So XD Gamer, shout out to him for stopping by. Can I suggest some guys that might be good and realistic for y'all? Yeah, go for it, buddy. Omar says, I don't like the other. F- oh, I don't like it. Uh, I like the other format better. I Yeah, we're going to do a bunch of variety of things, but I do appreciate you. Uh, we're just trying some different things here. Uh, like I said, this seems to be the new thing. But you know us at the Titan Upload Network. We just don't just go in and do whatever. We're going to be prepared. We're going to put some production behind our presentation, and that's what we're known for. That's what we do. I know it doesn't always sell. I know it's not always the most popular thing in the world, but if we're going to make a YouTube short, uh, a live show on YouTube, we're we're going to put a lot of effort into it, just like we would in a regular show. Pig, uh, Pig in the house, tighten up to you. Tighten upload. What are your thoughts of Chip Kelly leaving UCLA to become the new OC at Ohio State? I'll tell you what, man. I, I, this is this is exciting. This is exciting because I'm telling you what, things are about to change come July. Second week of July, this thing's going to just go crazy. And what is it going crazy about? It's going crazy about EA College football, baby. EA College football, this guy will be fully invested. No more Madden. I, I'll let my kid do that. But we'll be talking about college football back in video games again. And oh my gosh, I can't wait. You got to realize, I, I grew up with that stuff. Yeah, Derrick Henry's the cover? On college football? Oh, I don't care about Madden 24. I'm talking about college football coming out. But why that's interesting is this whole Chip Kelly thing. Like, it's relevant to me again. Because I, this is a guy that in college, so I was talking about what a, what a dork I was. In college, I would sit in my apartment. My roommates were doing whatever. Shout out to my old roommates. Shout out to Kyle. Kyle tried to drink a gallon of milk in an hour. He was told it was unrealistic, couldn't do it. So he's like, hey, I'm going to go out and get chocolate milk. Well, Kyle made it to a 50-minute mark. The milk wasn't fully gone. And Kyle just er all over the place. And and that was was Kyle. But Kyle's doing great. He's, He's up in the suburbs of Chicago. Um, got an amazing family and, um, we, uh, he's, he's, he's my, like I said, he was, uh, in my wedding and, um, he's a great guy, great soccer player. But again, going back to all the the stuff with, I would just sit in my uh, apartment and just put in all the rosters. I I do that for hours. We didn't have all the fun stuff. We could have went on eBay and bought the little, uh, memory card, but I was like, I'm not doing that. So I I loved it, man. I'd, I'd make a weekend of it. So I'm so pumped college football 
is coming back, but that's definitely relevant to me for sure. Uh, thank you. So many Titans YouTubers are unrealistic with free. Um, I, it's, it's just, uh, it's entertainment, man. It's entertainment. It's just for fun. It's for fun. It's cool. It's cool. I, um, I don't know, man. I just, there's some, uh, there's some realistic people coming and there's some realistic people I don't think much of. And the one thing I, I do understand, like there's a lot of speculation, like uh, locked on Titans came out with something the other day about trading. I just don't think Rand's going to trade. I, I mean, he may trade back, but can he really afford to trade for somebody like, especially like that just signed a, like, let's say T Higgins. Like, is that realistic? Is it realistic to trade for a corner? Is it realistic to trade for a linebacker at this point? If you're having to give up a, uh, your first or second round pick or your mortgage in your future next year. I mean, what are we doing here? We're rebuilding. That's what we're doing. And I just challenge all of you to just realize that guys, this is what we're doing. We're rebuilding. The Houston Texans war grade last year, by the way, if you go look at war scores, they're, they're usually right on. Like, for example, Kansas City Chiefs war score is through the roof. And they get so many points for because Patrick Mahomes is like, and, and that's why that stat is kind of really cool. Like, they take more into that account. Like, Patrick Mahomes might be a 98, but then there's a lot of other quarterbacks that could be a 95, 96. So is Patrick Mahomes only really three ratings higher than these people? No. Crunch time. Mahomes shows up, man. And, and there's a reason why I get the refs and that, but, but there's a reason why Kansas city always finds themselves there. They're the three seed. I'm like, they're going to go to the super bowl, not only because of Taylor Swift and sure enough, they not only go to the super bowl, they win again against a tough 49ers team. Why? Because Mahomes was a big reason for that. So they had like the 49ers were five. The chiefs were like two. Uh, I can't remember the dolphins were in the top 10. Um, I think the bills were. I'm trying to, I think I'm missing a couple uh, teams, but, but the war, but you, the Texans were like 31. Okay. The Texans define the odds. And a lot of that was because of the quarterback. So if Will Levis is going to be through the roof and do some things that CJ Stroud did, then of course the Tennessee Titans will have a shot at doing whatever they need once they kind of fix the offensive line. But if Will Levis is, you know, he's okay. He's great one week and okay the next, and then, then he's great the next week, and then he's very bad, and then he's okay again. Well, of course, you, you know, you're flirting with 500 again, maybe. Um, you know, if injuries happen, that's the one knock on Vrabel. Like, how many injuries happened under his belt? A ton. Uh, Titans Rossi, what's going on? Awaken says, hey, oh, we already got to that one. Titans Rossi, shout out to you again, buddy. Uh, what do we got? Solomon. How are you guys doing? Uh, producers over. He's pumped. He's pumped. We got, um, some family stuff going on, um, this summer that we, uh, we might break. We might as well. I won't tell you exactly what we're up to, but, uh, I think the family, uh, might be, uh, diving into a new adventure when it comes onto the old YouTube platform, but we'll see in danger. What's up, man? Happy birthday. You get one of these and one of these. We are on YouTube shorts live. Let's go. Free agency top corners. Got 13 likes. Remember, they're really hard to find. So you got those three dots in the upper right. If you, if that red bar showing that says subscribe, I mean, that's you, you got to hit that button, but then like behind that, or if you're already subscribed to like three dots, you click on that, then you'll be able to see that like button right now. We're only at 13 likes. And we got 36 of you in here. Uh, Jay Blaze with a 2-3 in there. What's going on? Tighten up. Tighten up, man. Love the name. Volcano Upload. Do you think we resign Henry? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's no point to even discuss that right now. Absolutely not. Derek is on his way. My guess is a lot of people's guess would be the Ravens. But this could Miami's in there. He'll get a shot. And, I, and again, I'm not going to go back over this and, and just keep creating content on Derrick Henry to create content on Derrick Henry. I love myself some Derrick Henry, but again, let's be real with ourselves. Does Derrick want to come back to Tennessee? I'm sure he does, but I also realize what Rand's trying to do. Rand is rebuilding. 
And you're not bringing Derek, Derek Henry back to play back up behind Tajay Spears. And if you believe that's the way to go, then like, that's probably pretty disrespectful to Derek Henry, right? So Derek Henry in general will go somewhere else. And I don't think he'll get a lot of money, but he'll compete to, to be a starter again. And I would guess that this is probably going to be Derek's one of his last years. Um, this is one of his last go arounds to do something. And as far as playoffs, so I think he's going to be very particular and, uh, I think he'll be at a team that's pretty good. And that's my honest opinion. And no, I do not think Derrick Henry will, will be back. And I don't even think they're going to be offering him anything because I don't think they're going to want to install them either. Uh, but good question. Volcano man. Appreciate it. A has ties with Callahan plus a solid corner. He's our next guy. We're going to dive into Joshua. He also says, can't wait for the college game to come out. I'm pumped, man. I'll be Illinois. You be Tennessee. Let's go. Illinois, congrats to them. The two seed in the Big Ten tournament. That'll be fun. SG in the house. What's up? Tighten up. Tighten up to you, man. So let's get to the next guy. Boom, boom, boom. So next guy. Was the guy you guys were uh, just uh, talking about a little bit here. Let me try to find out how I can get here. Oh, my goodness. There's too much going on here. Too much going on. There we go. Bam. So, Awuzie. Solid guy in Dallas, right? Comes over to the Bengals and honestly was really productive in 2021. 75.5 overall grade war score in 2021 was 0.63 that earned him number 10. The next year in 2022, he gets hurt. He tears his ACL. The problem with Awuzie is, uh, well, he's 29 in May. Okay. Um, last year did not go extremely well. 62.6 overall grade, 72, 72 out of 127 in the corner, number 75 war. But do I remind you guys, <laughs> I can get mad and upset or say, oh, well, we'll just blow this guy off. No big deal. But come on. 75 was his ranking for a war score last year. Christian Fulton was 250. Murphy Bunny was 201. Like, it's just really hard. I'm, I'm trying to put on a positive Oh my gosh, the music was on. I, I'm trying to put on a positive vibe and I'm trying to bring you like, I, I just, I don't even know what I'm doing, but it's hard for me to keep a solid face and not just bust up in tears because that's how bad it was last year. Like realistically, if you go back and some of you will do this, you can go back, watch the games on demand, whether they're on the NFL, whatever it's called now. And just think about the season as it unfolds. And, and, and remember that game one against the Saints, how close it was, and we, we barely lost. But that drive Derek Carr goes on the end to win the game. When we just needed one stop. Do you, do you realize, do you realize, like, how bad it was? You got to go back and watch. You go back and watch, and you, it will make sense. How... We get picked apart and how terrible Fulton is. We don't see it at the time, right? You go back and watch my watch party. I mean, I'm all pumped up. I'm thinking, hey, week two, we'll go get them. We'll be fine and all this kind of stuff. But no, in all honesty, now I go back and watch. It's just like you get to see the light and how terrible it really was. So for me to get on a Wouzier for having a 75 war score, Christian Fulton was 250. I mean, my, that is terrible. 0.75 is really good, or whatever he was. A uh, point, point 0.15 he was. That's not really good, but 0.15 versus point negative 0.02. That's your problem, right? Uh, coverage score last year was not very good. 62.3. Five games. This is the scary part with a Five games. Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Houston, San Francisco, all right, and Seattle. Those teams, again, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Houston, San Francisco, Seattle. I would argue, you know, Pittsburgh made the playoffs. Minnesota was kind of not very good in the beginning, and then they kind of got good, and then they weren't good um, when Cousins got hurt. Houston obviously made the playoffs. San Francisco made the Super Bowl. 
Seattle made the playoffs. Seattle turned it around and w- it was really good towards the end there. So, I mean, that somewhat makes sense, right? I mean, 40s and, and, and under 50. Uh, there was 130, I think, in there as well. His three best games, Indianapolis, fine. Buffalo, which is, you know, they made the playoffs and a lot of people thought they were going to compete for the Super Bowl, win their division and all that, which they did end up winning their division. And then Jacksonville, I believe, in the L.A. Rams. So you had those guys. Um, Yeah, I mean, Jacksonville was somewhat okay for most of the year. The L.A. Rams were, I think they ended up making the playoffs. But 67.9% completion percentage last year. 60, almost 68% of the throws his way were caught. So, again, out of snap, 745 over the last three years. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great either compared to some of these other guys in the thousands. So, again, ACL injury in 2022. He comes back. He's somewhat decent. The Bengals were a mess, though, last year. Let's be honest, everybody. The Bengals were an absolute joke. They were a mess. So, when when we kind of look at Wouzier and stuff like that, I mean, I can take a little bit of that and count, just like Tyler Boyd. Like Tyler Boyd gets a bad rap and everyone's oh, he's got only 600 some yards and he's only, or, you know, 700 yards, I believe, or 60 some receptions, 67 receptions. But then you're like, oh yeah, like uh, Nick Westbrook, he can't add 22 or 28 receptions. Chris Moore had 22 receptions. Uh, Kyle Phillips had 15 receptions. Traylon Burks had 16 receptions. And it's like, how can, how can I get mad at a guy for having 67? But yet your guys are giving me 22, 15, 16 reception. So I think that's kind of where we're at with the woozy. Um, again, the Titans can get him. Pro football focus is saying he's going to sign about two years, 7.2. Or no, I'm sorry. Two years for about 10 and a half million per season. You'll probably have to give him roughly around 12 or 13 million guaranteed. And he's going to cost you for two years, roughly overall 21 million. Again, he's almost 30. He's 29. He's six foot two Oh two. So he's got a little bit of size when he ran his 40 back in the day. I think it was at 4.43, which was really solid. He's had a lot of good production in Dallas in 2021. He's very efficient. Like I said, number 10.63, number 10 overall war score, which is super, super solid Four missed tackles last season, 112.8 passer rating when the quarterback threw his way, which is not very good. And 12.8. So our last guy we talked about in Fuller was 10.0. This guy was 12.8 per reception. Can we agree? We have an O-line. We will be a dangerous team. I cannot necessarily agree with that. But I can say we will be a competitive team. That's what I can say. So Tennessee, I appreciate, I love the icon. Uh, with D-Hop there, but but I would say dangerous team depends. Like dangerous as far as sneaking up. Night producer, um, he'll be back with us eventually. Um, sneaking up on teams that being dangerous like that, sure, yes, totally. Kind of like the Texans this year a little bit. Dangerous. Oh my gosh, Tennessee Titans are going to the Super Bowl because they got a good offensive line. Mm, I think we're going to need more than that. I think you know you're going to need some of your other proficient i think we could agree at this tennessee prods okay one side of the ball has got to be elite so if you're going to give me a really efficient offensive line some of the free agents or the draft we pick up a solid receiver let's say okay if we're going to fix the line though you're probably going to need to pick that tackle at number seven you know there's a lot of people speculating wide receiver and they're on that but you got to read between the lines. We've been trying to warn you on that one. When the combine stuff comes out, don't always take that as fact. Because again, John Robinson, I said this on the Bleacher Report, John Robinson, and I think it was Les Snead, right, of the Rams, the Rams GM at the time, when the Titans had the number one pick, they supposedly, rumor has it, made a deal in the urinal. That's what I heard. They were, they were doing their business and talking draft, They weren't talking in front of the media. They weren't talking in front of the camera. They weren't out in public. They were in a setting in the bathroom where you can't have cameras, right? You can't be sneaking up on people in there, right? And they were just, hey, going to the restroom, minding their own business, talking trade, and eventually that's what spiked it up. 
So that is quite interesting with John Robinson and the GM of the Rams. Joshua says, do you think DCD wills? All right. Defensive coordinator uh, can salvage Farley far. That's a really good take because Farley isn't on these numbers. Farley didn't play last year. Farley was a guy that was super pumped about. Okay. And I know one of you guys mentioned TA earlier, and I know he was super pumped about Chris uh, bringing in Farley, right? Chris Farley, uh, but bringing in Farley, right? Caleb Farley. The problem was he just, the injuries really kind of set him apart. Uh, the back started and he started slow in free agency. The media started getting on him when you're drafting the first round, man, they, they want results. They want results. So eventually over time, um, he he's playing and you think things are going to get better. And then he gets hurt and they're freak injuries, man. I mean, you should have seen the one where he gets injured uh, on, uh, I think it was Monday night football against the bills. It was on like a kickoff or like, yeah, kickoff team. And they were receiving the kick, and it just, oh, my gosh, it was gruesome looking. But then Farley had that whole thing go on with his dad in the house. That was last year. That isn't injury. That, that's messing with you mentally, right, emotionally. Um, that, that really is tough to come back from. So not only has he got to fight the that to get back, he's also got to fight the fact that, hey, I was a former first-round pick. I haven't really done much. Um, the fans are some of the fans are just ridiculous. I don't even say you're a fan when you, you comment, uh, insults when a guy's house blows up and he loses his father. I mean, we're not going to go down that road. Like some people did on Twitter, uh, or X I should say. But I think the issue with Farley is like, I, he could bounce back. Um, will he get an opportunity to bounce back? Will he be able to be mentally prepared to bounce back? I, I think that's probably yet to be determined. But still praying for the guy, and um, ultimately, ultimately, I hope it does work out because he was really talented. He, he was talented to go in the top 10 of the draft that year. And eventually, the back really scared a lot of teams, and then he had another back surgery, which was just scared everybody away. So I, I really think Farley's probably uh, this is it for him, and either he makes something of it this year or he's not going to. And it's it's sad, though. Uh, Demortus says Raven signing Derrick Henry in free agency. That's what a lot of people are speculating. Again, I, I think you got to be real too. Like Derrick's not going to cost you a whole lot of money. So for the people saying, oh yeah, Derrick's coming back to the Titans. Yeah, here he comes. It's not going to be the money that draws Derrick back. Derrick would be coming back because he loves Nashville. But again, I'm not making the show about Derrick Henry. I will say this. The last game of the year when the Titans beat the Jaguars, not knowing Vrabel's fate by that standard or by that measure, or by that time, Derek grabbed the mic and was able to come back out on the field and give his going away speech. He was either A, going to retire or B, go to another team. And I know there was a lot of speculation. Oh, they're going to bring Derek back and all that came from somewhere. But again, it's a uh, bulletin board stuff. It's, it's um, it's to draw up some more interest in times when times are down. And ultimately, I don't think there was any buying any of that. And I honestly believe this too. I think a lot of people that shoot that out at you, I don't think they believe it either. And it's sad though, because I really, really am going to miss Derrick Henry. All right, content. Oh, no Super Bowl contenders. I hear what you mean. Tennessee, all secondary needs some work. D-line was a bit inconsistent this season as well. Uh, yes, Derrick is signing in Baltimore. Running back, he's speedy. Again, Derek going to Baltimore. Uh, Tennessee is a playoff contender. Probably not because of how the AFC South's been looking with the direction they're going. Now, I will say this, XD Gamer, I love you here on this channel. Uh, I don't say that a lot about Jaguar fans. Maybe UCF Jaguar and you. But I will say this, okay? I will say this. Jacksonville, how that ended last year. Losing to Tennessee, being done in the playoffs, not playing well. is like the full reversal from the Titans. I'd be a little afraid because a lot of the hype, and I, you got to believe this, XD Gamer, a lot of the hype is around Trevor Lawrence. But if we find out that Trevor Lawrence is just a dude, he's a guy like, 
try to give you a good comparison. Um, maybe a guy like uh, Derek Carr would be a good comparison. If he's a Derek Carr-ish, there's nothing wrong with Derek Carr, but Derek Carr isn't going to lead your team deep into the playoffs. He might get you to a playoff game if all things go well, but Derek Carr is a guy that's going to need help. And he's proven that by going to New Orleans and not doing extremely well over there. So that's kind of the, the thing you're flirting with here. It, it could have been just, hey, you know, um, maybe an injury here, maybe a bad break. Maybe Lawrence was just not doing well. Maybe he was secretly injured. Who knows? Maybe it's a coaching thing. Um, but that would be my main concern for Jacksonville. Houston looks definitely in the right direction. Um, and then you have the Colts, which am I the only one that's not sold on the Colts? I mean, and you hear people talk about the Colts. Oh, the Colts this, the oh, Colts that. Oh, A-Rod's coming back. Anthony Richardson, he's just going to take off. And Fine. I played in like four games. He played the Titans. He made it to halftime. Landry took him out. Wasn't anything special in that game. You know who was special? The backup. The backup was. He was special in that game. And he's the reason why he ended up beating the Titans. Not because of Richardson. So we'll see. Richardson's young. So I, I just say that. Uh, Tennessee, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not starting to stop talking because I really didn't want to watch since midway through 2023. So don't really know much. I've supported for a long time. How much of the poor play was because of Raves? Couldn't get most out of his players. Guam Pops, I'm going to actually argue the difference. I think when we went over these, okay, we're still not done. I don't even care. I love free agency. Sunday night's going to be a freaking blast. You're not going to want to miss it. Okay. Unless you don't want to talk Titans and then obviously you're not, and then you're not going to miss much at all, but free agency with it's all centered. That, that is going to be a prime time event. So before this thing kicks off next week uh, with free agency, officially, I, I think what uh, next week for sure, Wednesday, I think three o'clock central time is when you officially can sign, but all those deals will be worked out beforehand. The first wave of deals. And the Titans are going to be in on a lot of these first wave of the deals because they got the most money. It doesn't mean they'll spend it all. The Colts have had the most money over the last couple of years, and they didn't really spend a whole lot. So the, for the Titans to spend money, we, we're, we're still not sure how that's going to go. I'm kind of mixed on how I feel about spending a lot of money in free agency this year. But I do feel, okay, when, when you say about Vrabes getting the most out of his players, when you see how bad it really was last year, are, are you saying Vrabel? I, I think I know where you're going. Like Fulton 46.9 is trying to put that on Vrabel. I'm going to do the opposite. You know, Vrabel was winning with these guys. You know, Vrabel was winning with backups. He got the number one seat. Okay. I don't agree with a lot of stuff Vrabel was doing behind the scenes. I don't agree in the power struggle stuff. I don't agree in the fact that maybe he tried to outdo Rand. Or him and Rand got into a, a, you know, they were supposed to work together and maybe Vrabel thought he was better than Rand. I don't know. I don't like the fact that Vrabel put a lot of these coordinators in these positions, especially on offense. Don't let me start on the offensive side of the ball. You know, you guys in this Tim Kelly thing, my goodness gracious, I told you that was a disaster. And then the year before Todd Downing, we had not, that was way disastrous. I remember doing a show on, on Todd Downing, coming over from the Raiders. This is the one thing that I preach on this channel. And if you don't like me, that's fine. That's totally fine. You don't have to watch. I, that's fine. But the one thing you got to take, because you can apply it for the rest of your life. Okay? You can apply it for the rest of your life. But the one thing when you're looking at all this crap going on, seeing if this stuff sticks, seeing if these guys come in and do this, and these guys come in and do this, and we sign this guy, and we sign this coach, and we do this. Go to the team that they came from. Ask those fans. Ask them. They don't need to have a 4.0 GPA. They don't need to have a doctor's degree. They don't need to have a master's degree. They don't need to make millions of money. They don't got to be the smartest guy in the block. They don't got to be a Democrat or Republican or an independent. Right? They don't got to like onions. The point of the story is they know their team. You know how good Andre Dillard is. If Andre Dillard went to the Cardinals tomorrow, Cardinal fans hooting and hollering, hey, we got a former first-round pick 
You know, it didn't work out in Philly. Tennessee fired their coach. We're going to make it work. You would be like, heck, no, that's terrible, Cardinal fans. A to Z, man. A to Z sports fan. Dude, not a good idea. Okay? Move on to somebody else. Those, those are the things. And, and, we, and for whatever reason, a lot of us don't want to do that. We want to go to these guys. No offense to A to Z sports. I like A to Z sports. Okay? I like Jared Stillman. I like Paul Kaharski. You know, I like these guys. But we want to run to them about these guys that are coming from other teams. And they got their perspective. They're looking at stats. They're looking at analytics. They're doing all this stuff, right? But sometimes fans of that team know more than us who are solely focused on the Tennessee Titans. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what I did with Dillard. And I heard he was terrible. And I heard he was terrible. So just throwing that one out there to you. Uh, More uh, QB room. I think it's going to be very vital. If you watch the Bleacher Report when I was on there, I gave away my top three agents. So I'll leave that out there until, I don't know, Sunday. I'll tell you exactly who we're going to take. Uh, best friend forever. Shout me out. We will. If you hit that subscribe button, let's go. Best friend forever. Titans Rossi. He'll shout you out as well. So definitely go check out Titans Rossi. All right, moving on. Um, let's, let's keep going. So our first two guys. Oh, this is fun. This is, this is so much fun. All right. So we're talking about guys uh, again, my main message. Okay. We, we talked about Fuller being an option in Tennessee, the, the thumbnail Nashville bound. And I'll, I'll get to that. I promise you I'll get to that. It's not clickbait. I, pr- I promise you there's something there. All right. So our next guy is boom. Our cover star, Steven Nelson, Steven Nelson was a guy that I saw 31. I was out. I'm not going to lie. Saw some of these corners. I kind of more flocked with, with Kendall. I thought maybe that would be, you know, I, I liked the woozy. I, I thought, Hey, six foot, you know, two Oh two. That's solid for a corner. Um, uh, Kendall Fuller. I, I, like I said, I gravitated towards him. I thought, well, maybe that that would be a, a better option for the Tennessee Titans. I got I got the Steven Nelson in my uh, you know, report. And and a lot of times you can't judge the book by its cover, right? You can't always judge that. So I did my due diligence and I, you know, I look into my guy. That's what I do. Okay. So so I I'm that's how I do about everything. You know, you give me the two top candidates for present. You know, I'm not, I'm I'm gonna do my research. Okay, I'm going to do my research. I'm not just going to go to CNN or Fox News to have them do the research for me. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm going to do my own research. That's, that's just what I do. I would totally tell you that that would be uh, something that you should do. Okay, I can't make you do it, but, you know, do your own research just to make sure. Otherwise, you'll fall for the, for the spider in India one. Uh, <laughs> this happened years ago on Facebook. There was a, a post going around. It was going viral about a white spider that hid under toilet seats in India. And when people would sit down to use the bathroom and go number two, the spider would come out from underneath and pop you in the butt and make you go paralyzed from the waist down. And I remember this going viral and, uh, and I, and I got asked about it. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. Okay. Wink, wink. I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus, but I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, before we get too scared and afraid, carried away, let's just do one quick thing. Just give me, give me five seconds. So I was told, that's fine. That's fine. Five seconds is all it took to find out that was a complete fraud, a complete fake. It was a joke. It was going around wildfire, and it was completely 100% false. It never happened. That's what we have to do. So when Steven Nelson comes up at 31, I'm the one yelling, you know, spider in the toilet seat. I'm like, 31, no way I'm signing a 31 corner. I mean, if I'm not signing Derrick Henry to run the football because I'm rebuilding, why am I going to sign a 31-year-old corner? Then I go back to last year. Fulton, 46.9, 250 war score. Avery, 46.2. Can't imagine how bad that war score was. Bunting, Murphy Bunting, 54.4. And I thought he was decent last year, and he's at like a 201 war score. Your best corner was a slot corner last year, and Roger McCrary from Auburn. 
who we drafted like in the we traded up for in the first uh, second round a couple years ago, and I was against it. Shame on me. That ended up being a really solid pick by John Robinson. So when I kind of break down Steven Nelson, though, the the time the, it is a little concerning with thirty one, but I, I'm being honest with you. Guy's rock solid, man. He is rock solid. Okay. Rock solid. So let me pull him up real quick. Get the old research going here. You guys are probably like, I uh, upload. I mean, I, we're not going to do this again. Bring in all these Houston Texans. Well, the problem was we brought in all the wrong Houston. I mean, Chris Moore was okay. All right. Steven Nelson. First thing. Likes to play off coverage. Oh, I'm out. I'm out. Can't do it. Nope. Can't do it. Can't have a third and 15 and playing 15 yards off the ball. Can't do it. But wait, there's more. There's more. He has closing speed. Yep. I'll do it one more time because I just love to clap, right? This is a guy that used to go wake up at two o'clock in the morning, go outside when he was a kid, just clap it up and then go back in the house and go to bed, right? Some of that's actually true. I know I'm crazy. Anyways. The closing speed with this guy is phenomenal. He might be 31 years old, okay? He might be 31 years old, but that closing speed is tremendous. Not only in the coverage game, also in the run. So when you need a third and five, and this guy comes out of nowhere, now it's all of a sudden fourth and two. When you're going to throw a quick one into the slot or a quick pass on the edge, this guy could find himself, boom, batting it down or, worst case, bringing you down short of the chains. He averages 1,067 snaps on the defensive side of the ball in the last three years. You want to talk about consistency? That, my friends, is consistency. War scores last year, 18. They got better. This is also arrow pointing up. 2021, war score, 47. Number 47, by the way. 2022, war score, 30. 17-point jump. Houston Texans last year, boom, 12 point jump, 18 war score went up again, uh, 72.6, 29th corner in the league, but the war score is even better. Why? Because I told you this earlier, war score matters when it's talking about how much more valuable you are to your team. And because he's steadily consistent, he is available. He is productive and he provides value. He is kind of, dare I say, I mean, he's really good. He's not, he don't have the best war score. But again, here's here's how much pro football focus says he's going to go for, roughly. Two years, 7.25 million, 8.5 guaranteed. You probably have to pay a little bit more than that, 14.5. Because realistically, realistically, in the situation the Texans were, they were bad for a while. They brought in a bunch of youth. A bunch of younger guys, which honestly, him 31 makes him more expendable, although he was pretty productive last year. But the other issue with Nelson is sometimes you just, you like what you're doing. You know, I I mean, look at your job, everybody. Would you be willing to move completely across the country, completely up four or five states? Would you like to move even other states or cities? I don't know if you would. Because the bottom line is, Steven Nelson may be perfectly comfortable in my town that I was born in, Houston, and Ken Moore, right? He may be perfectly com- comfortable hanging out with Ken Moore and Houston. And you paying him an extra million or two eh, doesn't really want him to jump over to Tennessee and start over again. Remember, Houston was at the low, 31 war score. Not really good, right? They're not going to do anything. We all thought we were going to sweep Houston this year. And all of a sudden, the Houston Texans sweep us and end up winning. Yes, that's right. Because of us winning the AFC South. They end up winning the AFC South. So all of a sudden, the Houston Texans are making the playoffs. And um, who would have thought, right? So they're they're starting to trend in the right direction. And and Steven Nelson may be perfectly comfortable there. So you're probably going to have to pay him a little bit more. And being 31 years old, he may not want to move his family and move again. So it might be tough for him to leave Houston if they offer him. Again, when he was running the 40 back in the day, 4.49, 
He's 5'11", 195. Okay? Again, he's off coverage guy, but he can close fast, and he was closing fast last year. And that might be the reason why he had four interceptions. Coverage score, 73.1. Rush defense, about a 60. Uh, pass rush, a 60 as well. Um, now, the only issue with Steven Nelson did start to decline those last three three games, right? He had an average score, coverage score, 57.8. He had seven missed tackles, but his passer rating, this is crazy, guys. Passer rating, 70.6. He did average 16.1 yards per reception, though, but passer rating, 70.6. So when quarterbacks threw his way, it was 70.6 for their passer rating. We talked about Kendall Fuller, passer rating of 101.9. We talked about a Wouzier, one twelve point eight passer rating. This guy was in the seventies. He was in the seventies. So, Stephen Nelson, I'm going to give you my ploy here in a minute. Uh, Colin says I am shocked to see players like Brown and Bayard get traded away, but the front office will sign Julio Jones and D Hop. I mean, you're right, Colin. I, I, D Hop did work out. It's too bad D Hop wasn't the guy Julio was supposed to be. Because if that was the way, we might have ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. Beal says, hey, they said that the cornerback from Kansas City got bad knees. Again, that's another, like, throw darts at the wall. You aren't trading for him. Okay? You're talking about the Kansas City uh, Chiefs cornerback, correct? Who just got uh, franchise tagged. And now we're hearing all these, oh, they're gonna, Titans are going to trade for him. To be honest, some of these guys, like, Titans are going to trade for everybody. The Titans are going to sign everybody. And it, it's just, oh, my gosh. Okay. So you just take a, take a deep breath, take a step back. That ain't happening. And, and nor should we want it to happen. Like, this team isn't one corner away from winning the Super Bowl. This team right now is heading more towards the other direction than going forward because we got a lot of holes to fix now. Even last season, you know, we won six games, but you take the team who started last season and now what we got right now, that team probably beats the team right now because we got all those holes. Rand's going to have an opportunity to do work. So we're going to trust in him. Rand patience. We're going to trust Rand. So, again, going after these guys, um, you know, the Kansas City corner, for example, you know, going after him, um, going after uh, who else? No, I mean, T. Higgins was the one I was getting all upset about. Like, it was like, oh, gosh. But, yeah, Sneed from, from Kansas City. I mean, Again, really good player last year, okay? But at the end of the day, you're not going to massively pay him and then trade away your future either. That's just not realistic. And again, if you're like throwing that against the wall and you're hoping that sticks, I mean, are you trying to be in the news for a day or are you trying to win the Super Bowl? That's going to be my argument. If you, if you did that, you'd be in the news for the day. They'd be talking about all the other teams that were supposed to sign him, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. So, again, those three little buttons, if you click those and hit that like button, I'd appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you, uh, 39, stopping in here and doing our first, for the Titan Upload Network, uh, doing our first YouTube live for tonight. BF Bucks friend, upload, what is your setup you have going on tonight? I'm sorry. So, YouTube is, um, YouTube really, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad. So, I won't. I won't. But YouTube is pushing shorts. Uh, they're pushing shorts so much that now they are live streaming shorts. So this really benefits some people because, I mean, really, you don't have to do any. I mean, you just turn turn your phone on and go. And that that's great. That works for a lot of people. Most of the people that watch YouTube, according to YouTube, is on their phone, right? So this makes a lot of sense for YouTube to push this. Plus, they see what's going on with TikTok and stuff like that. So they're competing with them. But the issue with shorts is it does change the dynamic, what we're used to with YouTube. So Rossi and I, you know, we were, we were talking about, well, what, what could we do um, to try to spike some interest? And, and again, we, we talked about, Hey, maybe we should do a couple shows like this and we're going to do shows the other way. Cause that's kind of what I'm used to. And I love that format, but um, some people won't watch that just like some people won't watch shorts. So right now it's kind of like a whole little, uh, you know, divide amongst the YouTube community, but majority of people 
uh, get way more subscribers doing YouTube shorts than you would do traditionally. Um, and there's a lot of facts to back that up. A lot of the main guys on the YouTube platform, they might have, I don't know, let's just say you have like 4 million subscribers. They're saying that majority, it's like 60 some percent of their subscriber base only watch YouTube shorts. So that's, and, and YouTube doesn't have to pay that much for shorts. So like on a regular video, let's say that, uh, I don't know, let's say a 2000 view video, you might make uh, 10 bucks off YouTube for that, right? But on YouTube shorts, you might make 50 cents. So again, I kind of see where it's going, but that at the end of the day, it's all about clicks and it's all about views. So for us, it's about the Titans. So we're just trying to bring you as much content as we can. Uh, Stoner Titan says, upload, what if the Titans win the Super Bowl? It'd be crazy. I mean, I, I, I'm getting to that age where I'm like, oh my gosh, is that going to happen? Upload, uh, what's it? Will Levis goes nuts for 4,400 yards, 39 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Some people say, oh, nine interceptions too much, but uh, not me. Slack God says, I'm trying to make you paralyzed from the waist down. Wink, wink. Uh, Titans stink. Oh my God. Hey, at least you heard my comment about the spider. Think Anthony Richardson will uh, rec record uh, a record, record most of the INTs, to be honest. He's extremely overrated. Uh, anyone the Bills just dropped, says Shaggy. Beal says, let's go 100%. Nelson can bring in veteran leadership. I like that. Juan says, Howard? Question uh, mark. Give me Fuller. Yeah, you guys could vote in that. I'm not sure if anyone could look and tell me how that vote's going. I appreciate it. Uh, Colin says Nelson had one of the best years in 2023. I think the Titans trying to play, uh, trying to play a player while he hot stoner Titan says, will Levis will win the super bowl. Joshua says, I like white. If he can stay healthy, Howard would be great too. I, I don't see white coming to us either. My son was all Mr. Producer was all fired up at about the bills. Um, but, uh, yeah, I watched Nelson. He gambles too much. Again, I, I totally understand where you're going. I don't think you're going to have to super pay this guy. And, and the problem for me is when you're rebuilding, a 31-year-old probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if you feel like, hey, you can solidify the offensive line, you can get yourself a stud in the draft at wide receiver, which I don't know. A lot of people are very high on 38 to get a stud wide receiver. I, I mean, we, we did get A.J. Brown, right? So I, I, I guess we should have more faith in that. Um, but then you're talking about like, there's so many other holes, man. Like, I don't know the thing that Jared Stillman and, and some people don't realize is like the, the one thing I kept yelling at my radio the other day is like, got to spend the money. We, we can't go cheap. We got to spend this. But I'm like thinking to myself, who are we spending money on? I mean, do you want me to go through the list really quick? I mean, I will. I can do it. I know we're talking corners, but I, I definitely can change things up. You're right. I mean, I, we could do this. So um, let, me, let me see here. Let's go free agent rankings. Okay. Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Going to be 30 probably when the season starts. Solid. Solid war score of two last year, war score of one year before war score of three could be a game changer, a game changer with him and Jeffrey Simmons on that defensive line. Oh, by the way, it's only going to cost you $120 million to bring him in. That's about 30 millions against your cap. Okay. I know they can do some things. That's a lot. So, I mean, if you got $75 million in cap room, and you're going to give half of it to this one guy, then you know what? I mean, is that going to be enough to catapult your defense when your corners are terrible? You have no middle linebackers. Your safeties are always hurt, or you don't have safeties anymore. Is, and, and your pass rush is going to be inconsistent because I don't know if Autry's coming back. I don't know if we're going to have any edge and weaver. I don't know if they're going to upgrade over there. You got Landry, which is fine. I like Landry. You got Simmons and Jones, though, man, in your interior. I don't know. Josh Allen, that ain't happening. Any franchise tag, franchise tag, franchise tag. You got the one guy from Baltimore. He's got a war score of 10. He's also another, um, what do we got here? You're going to cost you $92 million. 
right? So at least half a sack in 13 of 17 games last year. That's uh, what? Maduke Bauke or whatever his name is. Uh, Justin. Christian Wilkins. This is one Jared wants. 12 uh, war score, five last year, seven the year before. He's going to cost you $100 million. Again, he's an interior defensive lineman. Uh, Winfield Jr., Johnson, those guys, Sneed, they're all franchise tag. Pittman, Daniel Hunter, pass rusher from Minnesota. is going to be third, or almost 30, 29.3 right now. War of 18, six the year before in 22. He is also available. We're going to cost you around $65 million. Mike Evans not available. Tyron Smith, he is kind of uh, sometimes hurt, right? 942 snaps last year, 401 the year before, 810 that year. He was nine war score in 2021. He was 103 last year in 2022. In this past season, he was number seven. He had a bounce back year. He's going to cost you, uh, they're saying, about one year, 10 million investment. Maybe that's worth it. Problem? It's 33. And then we get into Fuller. So, again, that's the, the, the concern. Like, you can see money's going to dry up fast, and you can't sign all these guys. And, and, I, and I agree with the other side of it. Like, you can't just sign a bunch of dudes for $5 million to try to fill all your cap. I mean, you can't do that either. Uh, Phil, Fuller was apparently top 10 in corners. Now, Fuller, according to my stats, when we broke him down, his war score was in the top 10, which gives give him a lot of credit. He was seven. But his overall was roughly... Can't even tell you what his overall was. No, I think got him both seventh, seventh war and seventh overall stat wise. Um, his coverage score was eighty two point eight, so pretty good. But the problem I'm having with him is pass rating one hundred one point nine and his bear score of thirty five point three coverage against the Bears. Uh, I know, like I said, DJ Moore went off in that game. Um, but again, I, I I don't have a problem with Kendall Fuller. But I think he's going to be the prime, and everyone's going to way overpay for him. So his forty million could turn into fifty million. I don't know. Does he make you that much better? He's um, also twenty nine years old. Tannehill was horrendous. He cost us the Super Bowl. He was. Uh, what else we got? Stoner Titan. I bet if Tannehill when he got injured, Logan Woodside would have at least won that Bengals game. I will argue this. They, <laughs> you can't do it. You can't go back. But being at that game, the person that really hurt us, besides Tannehill and Todd Downey, was the fact that Derrick Henry was not Derrick Henry. But I see what the Titans were doing. The Titans went into that game, and they're like, all right, we should be able to beat the Bengals. And they should have. They had nine sacks, actually 11. Two didn't count, even though they were... They sack Burrow. Then we heard the whistle and we're like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. And then they made up whatever. The fact is it took a, a kicker to be perfect. It took key moments in that game to go the Bengals way. They came up with some big stops on third and one and fourth and one late in the game, which would have won us the game. Um, but the key thing for that game watching it was Derek wasn't Derek. So the Titans were like, hey, we will be able to, that was Derek's first game back after missing a ton. And the, what was reported was from the Bengals side of the ball, they knew which way Derek was going to run because of what foot he was planning on. He was, he could not fully plan on that foot and they could tell exactly what was going on before it happened. And it makes sense. Go back and watch the game on that fourth and one. How many times does Derek Henry get a handoff on a fourth and one and get plowed three yards behind the line of scrimmage? And that was with a line that was okay. This past year, yeah, that happened a lot with the offensive line. But he wasn't himself. And then when they threw in, like I said, then when they threw in the backup running back, and he is just running to the races, that 80-yard run, it's just like, oh, my gosh. Like, okay, and then he comes out, and then they put Derek back in there, and then they threw that stupid, oh, my gosh stupid screen pass that they ran 15 times and then got picked off. It seemed like, um, but yeah, that, you know, Foreman was the guy. I couldn't think of his name. Um, Dante Foreman was just, he had like four carries for 88 yards in that game. And I feel like if they would have used him just a little bit more, I understand what they were doing. They, they had to speed up Derek because they knew they knew they knew they needed Derek Henry the next week 
against the Chiefs because that's how you beat the Chiefs. It almost happened in the playoff game. It happened in the playoff game with Mariota, and it happened at home when we played the Chiefs the two times. Derek was a vital piece against the Chiefs. They couldn't stop him. And, and I think ultimately that kind of hurt the Titans to win that game, although Tannehill just had to be okay, and Tannehill was freaking ridiculous. Upload, who are your favorite players in the draft? I will get to that. I promise you that, but I do. I will say this. Don't buy the hype the Titans are taking a wide receiver in round one. I believe, if you read between the lines, the Titans are going to take a tackle. They're going to take a left tackle. They're trying to get some generate, you know, some people to move up, maybe even to spike up these wide receivers and move up. But I just, I don't see it. Brent says we owe the Bengals. All right. So again, one more time. <laughs> see that red button in your upper right? Hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you. Also, upper right-hand corner, the three dots. Boom, boom, boom. You click those three dots. I don't know why they do this. I, I mean, I technically, I know why they do this. They make it so difficult. But if you click those three dots up there, boom, 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 a new little thing drops down, and the like button will be there. I just appreciate you hit that like button. We got 24 likes right now. We have 59 people in here. We're going a while. I don't care. We, we might be here all night talking corners at this point. All right. So our last corner that we're going to break down, because we're not done just yet, and then I'll get back to my Nelson thing, because you're going to have to hang around just a little bit more. Okay, you'll have to hang around just a little bit more. So here we go. Kenny Moore, the second out of New uh, Indianapolis. Oh, so this guy was fun to break down. I Honestly, I mean, I, I know Kenny Moore. I mean, Kenny Moore versus the Titans, those stats are always inflated when we play him. I mean, he might be freaking ridiculously terrible, but then on the other end, it's like, Oh, uh, Carter says opinion on my Broncos cutting Simmons. That that's uh, he was good, man. I don't know what Denver's doing. Denver's paying Russell Wilson, or at least it seems like right, paying him eighty five million dollars not to play for the Broncos next year. That's crazy. That is, I know Russell Wilson's not very good, and and that kind of blew up real quick. I don't. I mean, that was a big deal for the Broncos to bring him in. And they had a lot of success with former quarterbacks that were really good. Like Peyton Manning would be one, but oh my goodness. I, 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 I feel your pain Carter. Uh, if you are a Broncos, he says my Broncos, I, I do feel your pain, buddy. So good luck, man. Uh, to the future. Uh, you got an awesome stadium. I will say this too. my uh, wife, uh, her father, um, was a huge huge, huge Bengal or a uh, Broncos fan, um, growing up and, and, and you know, so it kind of, we have some Bengals or some Bengals, some Broncos stuff, uh, memorabilia and, and stuff hanging around the house. Um, because of her father. So, uh, just throwing that one out there to you. All right. So let's get into our next guy. Our last guy of the night. We already mentioned Kenny Moore, the second. So Kenny Moore, the second is one of those guys that probably as Titan fans, you don't like him very much. Because he like literally sometimes doesn't do anything, but then he plays the Titans and has a game of his life. And you're like, what the heck? He's like a Titans killer type guy, right? Uh, he seems to always kind of show up when the, when the Tennessee Titans come. Now, on a contract year, he showed up last year. He, I mean, I'm going to give you some background information on this guy. And you're going to be like, sign, sign myself some Kenny Moore, baby. Bring him to Tennessee. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I do I got something at the end that kind of deflates that the bubble will pop. But I'll build it up as best I can because that's what I do. So the first thing is he is solid versus the run. So he's not afraid. Look at those biceps over there, by the way. The, the pic Oh, you guys can't see the picture. I'll say that for the live show, the, 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 you know, the, the regular show that's coming up here. Uh, but no, when you look at Kenny Moore, He's got a lot of stuff going on right now. He, he, I'm looking at him right now. He's got some big old biceps going on. Uh, looks real fit, real lean, and looks like he's ready to hit somebody. That, that's Kenny Moore, right? Uh, 957 snaps over the last three years. That's not terrible. Uh, pro football focus saying you can roughly get him for about $13.5 million over two years. That includes $6.75 over uh, average with $8 million signing bonus. Um, I don't anticipate him coming back to the Colts, but with the Colts, you just never know. Uh, last year, war score of 16, not bad. The year before, 245. The year before that, 51. So we went from 51 war up to 245 and then back down to 16. That is a drastic jump. 
something clicked? Was he hurt? Who knows? Last year had three interceptions, coverage score of 79.3, so that's pretty good. He did have 12 missed tackles, but of the corners, he's going to be one that's more around the ball. He's around the reverses. He's around the sweeps, the tosses, the the off tackles, um, you know, the the quarterback uh, boots. He, he's he's going to be out there taking that all in first over a guy like who's going to be at the very you know, like a corner that's back. So just wanted to throw that one out there too. Okay, passer rating only ninety uh, about ninety eight point three, which isn't great, but it's not awful. Did have two sacks, which is nice to see. But here's where he kind of elevates, right? All the other guys we talked about were like 10, 12, 16 yards per reception. This guy is at 9.3 and Kenny Moore. Okay. Best games. Carolina. Ooh, Carolina Panthers. A team Will Levis scored 17 points against. Let's not forget that. Just kidding. 93.9 overall coverage score. Baltimore. Houston also extremely high for Kenny Moore. And I would argue that Baltimore and Houston were pretty good especially Baltimore, although they don't throw it very well. It's still whatever. Lamar is still an amazing quarterback. And there's a reason why he's uh, MVP, right? Jacksonville, Atlanta, New England, the worst scores. And those worst scores were between 46 and 50 the worst years of his career, 2021, 2022. So that's him in a little bit of a nutshell, right? So on the surface, five, nine, one ninety, only 30 years old. It makes sense. Uh, to the Tennessee Titans would float something around. Again, 13.5 is not that terrible. You put him in there, maybe you draft a guy later in the rounds, maybe the fourth round you could bring in. Maybe you get a guy that's released. Uh, I believe it was the the guy we got from the Packers was doing an interview, and he was talking about free agency. And he said um, sometimes it's the free agents that come available after free agency that make up the the larger of the free agency because they get released and then you get them for more discounted rates and they might be more productive because they're usually pretty good players, but because of the salary cap and some wiggle room and some new talent coming in from the draft, they're actually a casualty. So then they get cut. So he was making the case for that. So maybe those guys come available and you can plug and play with Kenny Moore. You got Roger McCreary. Here's the problem. And I think you figured it out in the chat. Kenny Moore is predominantly around the line of scrimmage all the time, whether it's against the run, whether it's against the pass. So that means he's a slot guy. That is true. He's a slot. So Roger McCreary can play outside. And if you're okay with that and he can be successful, then Kenny Moore's a go. But if Roger McCreary is still your slot guy, then bringing in Kenny Moore and putting him to the outside is probably not the best bet. So, therefore, Kenny Moore, not good. Okay? So, I did want to throw that one out there to you. Let's go back really quick. The title of the show, bringing it in, and then we'll talk to you guys. And I'll get to Brent about uh, Tredavious White. Here's what I know. Okay, here's here's kind of what happened today a little bit. Um, so basically, the the whole thing with with Nelson is Nelson is is a guy we we've had guys from Houston before, but Vrabel that connection's gone. So I understand from the outside looking in that that would be a connection, but again, for looking at um, you know Nelson, who again we we we've talked about Nelson. I'll, I'll put him back on the screen real quick. Uh, so we talked about Nelson. Let me get him real quick. So boom, Steven Nelson from the Texans had a really productive year last year. So again, you know, his last three games weren't great. I will say that, but that was the regular season. Last three games weren't great. But if we look at this and I have it pulled up somewhere. Okay. This came out today, this morning, and it, and it goes through and it's not the all end all be all but it's talking about fits and likelihood of teams being interested. And again, it's just, I've been mentioning pro football focus all night. And I'll mention them again. But when we talk about Kendall, I'll just go ahead and put myself back on the screen. But when you talk about Kendall Fuller, Arizona Cardinals and Las Vegas Raiders seem to be the main threat in, in going for him, especially now that Jalen Johnson's off the board. 
And uh, again, I don't think anybody's trading for Snead. That's fairy tales. That ain't happening. So when you look at Kendall Fuller, he seems to be the best corner available. Okay. So Arizona and Las Vegas. Las Vegas might be in a lot of this. So just throwing that out there to you. A Wuzie connection to Atlanta, which again makes kind of sense. Uh, AJ Terrell on the side of him. Uh, Morris has a lot of young guys who were inexperienced, they say. So bringing in a veteran who played in Cincinnati, um, Uzi might make a lot of sense. Uh, again, for Kenny Moore from Indianapolis, they believe the best suitor for him would be the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys do have some guys, Bland and Diggs, for example. Um, but in adding this guy, uh, you know, Kenny Moore, the second and in, into Dallas's defense, might be just what it needs. Remember, Dallas's defense took a poop in the playoffs. And, and, and Dak doesn't always do well in the playoffs, but the defense just took a poop. They couldn't stop anybody in that game against the Packers. They're going to be in a different boat than we are. We, we don't even know what we're doing defensively yet. We don't have a game plan. We don't have any of that. So just plugging in a corner and thinking it's going to work for us. You got to start somewhere, though. That would be my argument for Nelson. Nelson can play in any system, but zone-heavy secondaries that lean a lot on single high looks resemble a great fit for the veteran and for 2023 with the Houston Texans. Teams mentioned in this spot, Arizona Cardinals again, and your Tennessee Titans. So, Steven Nelson, according to Pro Football Focus this morning, this would have been ideal landing spot and probably something that the Titans would be very strongly considering. Now, we've went through this before, and I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Draft a guy. Well, you're not going to draft a guy in the first round. And if you've been watching a lot of this stuff lately, you're not going to draft a guy in the second round. Why? Because at 38, once that's done, you don't have another pick in the top 100. So you're waiting all the way to the fourth round, okay? Because some of you are loyal and watching me right now, I'll give you this. I'll go ahead and give it to you, okay? One thing that's, and I, I've already mentioned this on Bleacher Report when I was on there this past week. The one thing the Titans have to do in free agency, even over corner and even over wide receiver, is they have to get a center. They got to get a center. Center is the most vital part for free agency in my book because you can get your left tackle in the draft, right? You can get a wide receiver technically in the draft. You can also get one in free agency, but you can get one in the draft. That whole defensive thing going on right now, corner, middle linebacker, safety, uh, edge rusher, whatever the case. Yeah, that that's a mess, right? That's a mess. I'm sure you can plug some things in there. But the one thing you can't do in the draft is wait. They had Teron Davenport on from ESPN saying, hey, I don't think the Titans are going to pick anybody up in free agency, and they're going to pick somebody up in the sixth or seventh round to play center. You can't do that to Will Levis. And for all of you that love Will Levis, okay, and I love Will Levis too, you can't put him in those situations where he's a quarterback and you're putting Aaron Brewer back out there at center or a sixth or seventh round draft pick at center. The stakes are way too high and you can't start the season. And all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, this was a total failure. The sixth round pick. He can't play. What else do we got? Oh yeah. We got these 15 other guys over here. Any and one of them will work. That's what we used to do. And that does that philosophy does not work. So you need to get a center in free agency. Whew. Then you can uh, cushion Berry's my guy from Denver. I'm just, I'm done with it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. He's going to be there for a few years. Then I can start worrying about my left tackle and some of these other positions corner though. Eh. But again, corner, like I said, corner overall, if we go back and look at former Tennessee Titans, Christian Fulton. Now, if you're going to make an argument, why Christian Fulton should come, we should resign him, which I can't believe we would. But if your argument is, yeah, let's re-sign Christian Fulton. You know, he was okay at times, and he was terrible at times. Last year's war score was 256, and I went off on that. But I told you, Kenny Moore II in Indianapolis last season 
had a war score of minus 0.09. And he also had a war ranking of 245. 245. This year, he turned it upside down. He had a war score of 0.63, which made him number 16 overall. Number 16 overall war score. 245 last year. Well, Christian Fulton, this past season, 0.02, 256. Maybe he has a drastic jump. So, but no, I'm still staying away from Christian Fulton. So, show's about ready to end. Please let me know who you want of these four corners. Um, And there should be a vote in there somewhere. I'm going to get to some of your takes now. And again, I appreciate your loyalty on this channel coming out on a random night to just check us out. Yeah, that like button is an issue for short uh, live. It it definitely is. But again, I, I, I feel like... You know, YouTube is it's a it's a business, and, and I feel and I, and I still feel this way. A lot changed for this network when YouTube Shorts came out. Um, whenever that was, a lot a lot changed, and um, unfortunately, that that's the world we live in. You know, now the whole thing going on. What what really frustrates me the most as a content creator is. You know, I'm not a guy that just comes on here and just turns my phone on or my computer and just starts rambling. That, that's not me. I don't have a problem with people that do that. It's just not me, okay? So I'm going to put a lot of work into my thumbnail. I'm going to put a lot of work in my graphic package. I'm going to put a lot of work in my research, and then I'm rolling. It's not always successful. I admit it. It's not. Sometimes it's not what people want. If they want that, they go to ESPN or they go somewhere else. I, I totally understand that. But – Visually appealing, that's my uh, learning style, so to speak. Visually appealing, like that that sells for me. So, of course, that's what I t- try to do. But, again, it, it just seemed like when YouTube Shorts came out that it was just, it was, it's, it's been a difficult transition. It's got to learn something new. And then you, you get the, I mentioned the whole AI thing now where, you know, people aren't even showing their face anymore. And they're, it's not the real voice. And it's just a bunch of stuff being thrown at you and it's, it's working. I mean, sub rates going up high views are going up skyrocketing, but for guys like me and you know, guys like you who content create, cause I know um friends with a lot of you guys that are doing the same thing I'm doing. It's tough stuff to compete in that kind of market, but do it because I love the Titans. But yeah, I think they need to fix that. Stoner Titan says, yeah, I definitely agree. The season with Burks last chance, unless we get neighbors, then Burks could be amazing in the slot and reliable first down guy. He's got to be effective. He's got to be on the field. And when he's on the field, he's got to produce. And those are two different things and they're two different outcomes possibly, but that that's kind of what Traylon Burks needs to do. The whole thing. Hey, can Traylon Burks be AJ Brown? That argument's done. Can Traylon Burks do this? It's not about Ken anymore. It, it's about doing it. And I think we're all agreeing on that. Uh, Maxwell, I think our defense should uh, involve faster DBs, fuller and more should fit. Thanks for, uh, that's the stuff I'm looking for tonight. I appreciate it. Tennessee prods against, and thanks for all your comments. This year, Traylon's last time to prove it. Would White make sense? Tredavious, Tredavious, Tredavious White. He, he makes sense, but I think when guys of his, caliber get released a lot of times they get sucked up by a team that's more in a win it now mode and it's going to be a one-year make it or break it deal for him I think it's to be a one-year deal I don't think you're going to see a lot of teams lining up to be given a massive contract but I think he'll get a decent one-year deal and that's probably what all he'll agent will want the problem with with white would be it just again, I does it fit what we're trying to do? Are you, are you just trying to pick him up for a year, him go off, and then you can't afford him, and then he goes away? Uh, is that worth it? But are there young guys to develop? Right now, we don't have a lot of guys. Uh, we can't say Avery. We're gonna pick Avery and have him be a developmental piece. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't have a lot of youth 
on this team. We don't, we, we just, we got a bunch of, you know, we got a bunch of guys and a lot of holes. And a lot of times we got these undrafted free agents, which is fine, but you know, we don't, we haven't drafted well. And, and a lot, it's not necessarily on ran, you know, I ran, ran's in that point now where I think a lot of it's going to start to go his way and point his way. But before you just point at J John Robinson and John Robinson had a lot of hits but he had a lot of misses too. And, and some of those misses are glaring for sure. I'm ride or die with Titan upload the OG. I can't watch your buddies. However, upload. Hey, that's okay, man. Um, those guys are extremely important to me because those guys, well, I was going through a lot. I mean, I don't want to get too personal with you. Um, but I'll just say it was tough, man. I mean, it was, it, it's been uh, a little challenging, but, you know, I give my wife a lot of credit. She's really trying to help me out to allow me to have time to do this. And, and again, what I do is, is maybe a little different than what others do, and that's fine. But, like, again, I just can't wake up and then just be like, yep, I'm going to go live in five minutes and then go live. I just, I just can't do it. And I wish you could tell, like, when I first started, like I, I'm talking grinding, man. I mean, you, you if you first start in YouTube world, the the dream, the envision's always there. You see what other people do, and you're like, hey, I, I can do that. And, and Tom Grossi, you know, for all he's been with fan of the year and, and stuff like like me and him, like we got a lot of comparable things going on, right? Besides just being history teachers. But the difference between us is he a lot of these guys started way earlier. And once you get on the curve, like, for example, like Mr. Beast is legit, but if Mr. Beast started a channel today for the first time, it's not going to be as easy as when he did start it. So for me, like, you know, I got to have a lot of prep time. I got to have, um, you know, time to, you know, for the graphical packages because everything's built. And it's like, it takes a lot of time, right? But when you got a, when you're a dad and you got four kids, it's not like I can leave my kids at like you know I'm not going to Titan games every week, leaving my kids at home. So so it it, it does become a challenge. So like the one thing I got was like a plotted time after church. It was boom, watch party time, and I loved it. I loved it hanging out with you guys, talking Titans. Um, but didn't get to do a lot of the work, you know, the the pregame, the the, the previews and stuff. So. And those guys were very efficient to keeping the channel 